Hi, I'm Devin from VR Scout, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to shoot VR 180 content. In partnership with YouTube, VR Scout runs a program called the VR Creator Lab, where we work with YouTube creators all around the world to produce VR 180 content. We wanted to create this video to share with you what we've learned along the way so that you can do the same. I'll introduce you to the gear, show you how to shoot, and share some examples from the VR Creator Lab from channels like BET, Cirque du Soleil, Ochicaron, and many more. So what is VR 180 video? Well, it's a newer format that sits somewhere between 2D video and 360 video. You can view VR 180 content on a phone, a laptop, or even in a VR headset. As a viewer, VR 180 is great because most of the content is in 3D. That's because almost all VR 180 cameras are stereoscopic. Monoscopic cameras capture the world from a single lens, which makes the image look a little bit flat. Stereoscopic cameras capture the world very similar to how our eyes see with two lenses pointed in a single direction. Stereoscopic cameras create a 3D depth effect and, in a headset, allow us to relive that moment captured in 3D. The distance between our two eyes is referred to as the interpupillary distance, or IPD. Stereoscopic VR 180 cameras have a very similar IPD to our human eyes, which allows us to relive a moment and see the world in stereoscopic 3D. There's a few different ways you can actually watch VR 180 videos. If you're using a laptop or a desktop computer, you can go to YouTube and drag around on the video with your mouse or using the WASD keys on your keyboard. If you're using a mobile device like a phone or a tablet, you can use the YouTube app and watch a VR video by moving your phone around or dragging across the screen with your finger. And for an even more immersive viewing experience, you can use a Google Cardboard headset and use your phone as a display, allowing you to watch VR 180 content in 3D. I actually often prefer using a dedicated VR headset like an Oculus Go for a more immersive and higher quality viewing experience. Just like you would watch VR video, you can also check out some really cool 3D VR 180 photos. Go to Google Photos to see, share, and upload your 3D VR 180 content. You can check out VR 180 photos on a computer, on your phone, or in a headset for a true 3D experience. All right, let's talk cameras. VR 180 cameras are almost all stereoscopic, which means that there's two lenses capturing a single direction. VR 180 cameras mimic our own interpupillary distance, which allows us to see the world as if we were there. There are a number of different cameras out on the market, ranging from more consumer-level cameras to entry-level cameras to professional solutions. We've recently seen a few two-in-one VR 180 cameras, which are VR 180 stereoscopic cameras that fold up into a monoscopic 360 camera. This is great if you're on the go and you want to use your VR 180 camera for more than just 180. There are also some professional cameras like the Zcam K1 Pro or K2 Pro, and these offer a higher resolution, more dynamic range, and more of that cinema quality VR 180 that you just can't get with entry-level cameras. However, compared to the Views XR or Insta360 Evo, the K1 Pro can be a bit pricey. Some cameras will have built-in internal batteries that you can charge with an external charger, while others will have removable batteries that you can swap out. One of the benefits of these entry-level cameras is that you can shoot, trim, and upload straight from your phone. If you do want to edit your videos, you will have to use a computer. VR 180 cameras will also range in resolution. Cameras like the Lenovo Mirage can do a maximum of 4K resolution, whereas the Insta360 Evo and Views XR cameras can go up to 5.7K. Professional cameras like the Zcam K1 Pro and K2 Pro can actually go up to 6K resolution at 30 frames per second. With VR cameras in general, you want to shoot a minimum of 30 frames per second. Lower frame rates can actually cause nausea with the viewer and make you feel a little queasy. It's important to know exactly what you're going to use these cameras for and choose a camera that works for you. I would recommend starting off with the Insta360 Evo or the Views XR as a entry-level camera. There's a few other pieces of equipment you might want to consider for your shoot. Now these are not necessary, but they can add a lot to your production. A stabilizer will make sure that you get the smoothest shots you can. 
Now, some of these cameras do have built-in internal stabilization, like the Insta360 Evo is great for this. However, using an external stabilizer will even add more fluidity to your shots. Moving shots can be a little tricky in VR180 because you're forcing the viewer to move, so adding stabilization and smoothing your shots out is gonna make it much more enjoyable for the viewer. Cirque du Soleil did a great job of this with their VR180 series. You might also want to consider lighting. With VR180, you can set up your lights behind the cameras and light your subjects just fine. However, using practicals or existing lights will make your production a lot easier. While all of these cameras do have microphones, they're really good for picking up scratch audio. If you're filming a subject, use a lav mic to capture better audio. You can also use spatial microphones to pick up ambisonic audio, which will allow for a spatial, more immersive experience. Spatial audio is a bit more advanced and can get a little tricky. So if you don't know what you're using, stereo audio is the way to go. Besides knowing your cameras really well, it's also good to prepare for the shoot you're gonna do. While pre-production can vary from person to person, it's good to kind of map out the shots you're gonna get and know what to expect. Storyboarding for VR can be a little tricky because you have a very wide frame size and there's no wrong way to do it. Plan for your shoot and do what works best for you. All right, now that you know your cameras and some of the equipment you'll be using, let's go out and shoot some VR 180. So before you actually begin filming with the camera, it's good to kind of map out your shots and what they're gonna look like. One easy way to do this is to use your own head. If you place your head where you want the camera to roughly be and hold it very still and just move your eyes around, what you can see with your eyes and a fixed head should be roughly what the camera captures. Once you get an idea for what your shot might look like, then you can bring your camera into play. Because you would see the tripod legs using a tripod, with VR180, you're going to want to use a monopod. This will conceal the legs of the camera underneath it, so it will be out of shot. Once you know what your shot is going to look like, you can place your camera. It's good to place the camera roughly about chin level to the people you might be filming. This will give a more natural look to the viewers when watching in a headset. So to get started, you'll turn your camera on, you'll connect to the camera's Wi-Fi. Now each camera will have its own app, so make sure to follow the camera instructions and know how your camera works. Once you connect to your camera, you can go through the app to preview what your shot is gonna look like. On the Insta360 Evo app, we can pull up the shot and see exactly how things are going to be framed. A lot of these apps will also allow you to preview the shot in a headset. So you can use a cardboard viewer to see the shot in 3D. Previewing your shot in a headset is crucial because it's the closest you're gonna to get to the final product before filming. While you can use your phone to control and capture content with the Insta360 Evo or the Views XR, some cameras like the Zcam K1 Pro actually allow you to connect and control it with a laptop computer. You can actually connect a VR headset like an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive and get a live preview of that image in that VR headset. You really want to consider distance from your subjects to the camera or what you might be shooting. Getting too close will break the stereo 3D effect and being too far will make you seem very flat. So for distance, a good rule of thumb is about a foot and a half to six feet from the camera itself. When filming, it's really good to consider depth and the use of 3D. So blocking your shots or spacing your actors out to be at different distances from the camera can have a really cool effect when watching it in a headset. Once you have your shot roughly how you want it, you can go through the camera settings and make sure your image is going to look great. You always want to shoot at the highest resolution possible. So for this camera, it would be 5.7K. For frame rate, a minimum of 30 frames per second is always what you want. Anything lower will make your viewer feel nauseous in a headset. Under your exposure settings, you can set your ISO, which should always be at the lowest value. Having a low ISO is going to reduce your video noise and any grain you might see in the image. Your shutter speed should be roughly double that of your video frame rate. So while we're shooting at 30 frames per second, the minimum shutter speed you want is 1 60th of a second. Since we're shooting outside, I'm even going to go higher than that. And just like that, your camera will begin filming capturing the world in stereoscopic 3D. You can preview the shot in lower quality while it's being recorded, so you can kind of see roughly what you're capturing. Sometimes when you're shooting, your cameras might overheat. A good way to get ahead of this is to let them cool down in between takes. You could also use a dry ice pack 
and avoid condensation behind the camera. If you're using a camera with an internal onboard battery and you want to maximize your shooting time, you can use a battery pack or an external charger and hide it behind or underneath your camera and continue shooting. The quickest and easiest way to share your VR180 content is going to be uploading it straight from your mobile phone. Entry-level cameras will allow you to use their own apps to upload straight to YouTube so you can share your content on the go. However, if you do want to edit your footage, you're going to have to use a computer. Now that you know how to shoot VR180, you're probably going to want to edit your content. In the next video, we'll show you how to stitch, process, edit, and upload your videos. Stay tuned.